Plus jumps. Oh yeah, sweet. Okay, Jesus. Got the hands look so fucking strange. <laughs> well, E3 was a bit shit. <laughs> God, it was bad. <laughs> it was just, um, it's all like a comment. It was like, uh, not watching E3 is like the new watching E3. <laughs> and to be honest, that kind of sums it up. Um, I, I, I think the fact that Sony weren't at it just left, you know, a huge gaping hole in terms of like potential announcements and stuff. And I just think it's it's almost a shame because that whole big what like annual event where everyone is there, everyone is having the stage going, this is going to be our hype moment for all their games going forward. That's kind of just gone. It's fragmented across all these smaller little, almost like just YouTube events, you know, like the Nintendo Directs or, you know, the State of Plays. And like, I, I do think that if they try to make something special, spread, like, 10 times a year or whatever it's just going to distill the whole thing whereas e3 was just like growing up you, you probably remember you know the gaming magazines when it was like i think it was in july when you get like the e3 edition and it'd be like normally like a double issue of like games master or like psm or one of the magazines and you get all the trailers for e3 on the dvd that was always like my favorite issue of the year and e3 was always like this this dream event. I'm like, God, I really wish I could go. It looks so cool. Look at them. They're in the props and the women in the game and tops and all the new games that they get to play. But it did get us thinking anyway about, okay, E3 was a steaming pile of disappointment, but that doesn't mean there aren't still games on the horizon that we're looking forward to. So Dan, what are your most anticipated games? Yeah, you know, E3 really did, you know, I know, of course, Sony weren't there and we're still hoping for maybe a a state of play in the next few weeks, possibly. Nothing's been announced yet, but I'm sure they have to show something um, at this point Um, because, you know, we've got a lot of great games on the horizon, but we don't have any kind of confirmation about release dates. Um, So, yeah, you know, even even if we just look at it from a third-party perspective and the third-party games that are going to come, really there wasn't much at E3. Um, nah. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a bit unfortunate. So, you know, out of out of all the games in E3, I suppose the only thing that really um, really looked somewhat interesting to me, and again, mm-hmm. it still got memed on so hard, was uh, Stranger of Paradise, the Final mm-hmm. Fantasy Souls game. Mm-hmm. Um, demos out, and it's actually it actually plays really well. So um, mm. it's like a Neo 2 clone. So, uh, you know, as a Final Fantasy, you know, fanatic. Aficionado, yeah. Aficionado, yeah. I'm going to, um, I'm definitely going to buy that and I'm going to look forward to it. Um, the chaos thing is uh, definitely a meme and maybe they'll, maybe they'll change embrace that it. a little bit. They'll maybe embrace, embrace it. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was the only like real game that stood out to me from E3. Well, um, Elden Rain was good. No. But that wasn't E3. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, I was, was, yeah. was going to get to that, man. I was yeah. <laughs> that was going to be my big flow, one. man. Uh, no, no. Yeah, so that was it. You know, that was it because Jeff Keighley, who effectively now should be known as killer Mr. of E3. Mr. You know? E3, it's his whole life. No, it's, he's the killer of E3 now. He's Because what's his, his one called now? Um, summer, the Summer Games Show or mm-hmm. whatever it's called. And of course, he's doing, you know, he's, he's the creator of the game's... Um, the, the game, game, game awards. awards. Yeah, I think he's made it his year. whole life to kill E3. And then, yeah. yeah. Oh, really hi, Mark. You know, I think, and, you know, there's probably reasons behind that. I know that E3 are kind of, they're effectively like a gaming lobby group. You know, they're, um, I know there's a lot of stuff about them trying to, um, the, the same the same parent company who owns E3 are, are big into loot boxes and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I think there's maybe, maybe they're a bit of a kind of legacy a bit of a... He doesn't want to kiss the, the mob ring of the gaming industry. Yeah. It must be yeah. the least intimidating mob ever. Like, oh no, it's the E3 ma- mafia-like. <laughs> you know, just... Quit staring at us! Yeah, take a picture. Less longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff Keighley's, you know, um, definitely he's switched over and now he's... Uh, He's a Hideo Kojima and um, Miyazaki fan, it seems. But, he's the Miyazaki, um, and he's, he's particularly the Kojima hype boy. 
Big time. You know, like yeah. if Kojima was coming out to the boxing ring, you know, Jeff would be there at the megaphone, you know, yeah. trying to amp up the crowd, you know, prancing around him like. You know, he's doing some great stuff, you know, in fairness to him. Um, the Game Awards, you know, got off to like a rocky enough start. But like last year, it was it was pretty great, I thought. Um, yeah, it was solid. And was any solid. any Joseph Farris appearance is just gold. And I, th- I think exactly, Joseph Farris, yeah, yeah. like that Oscars uh, thing, I think that was 2017, that kind yeah. of really put it on the map. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> Who's um, this mad person? This brilliant mental person. Yeah, he really he really cemented himself into the zeitgeist there with that mm-hmm. one. Um, Fuck the Oscars, you know? <laughs> Fuck the Oscars! Fuck you! I'll tell you! I was like, this is bullshit! Look, here's the thing. Yeah. The gaming industry... Yeah, so Stranger Paradise was really the only big game. Of course, you know, if we're talking about maybe Nintendo, there was some stuff in Nintendo, but... Um, but things coming to the PlayStation, really, it was just Stranger Paradise. Um, mm-hmm. Then Elden Ring, of course, um, is is definitely going to be my most anticipated game of the mm-hmm. year. Um, you know, it's a game I know all by launch day. I, I don't need to see a review. I know I have 100% faith in Miyazaki and From Software that the yeah. game is going to be amazing. So um, that game is 100%, you know, top of my hype. Um and yeah, that's that's pretty it. Pretty yeah, much that's it. pretty much it. Like from that week of E3 <laughs> or yeah. whatever it was, um, Elden Ring it, it gave me certain shades of a far more violent Shadow of the Colossus, but I dig it. I yeah. like it. <laughs> just just um, just the fact that you've got your own little horse. I'm very intrigued to see how they tackle a slightly more open design yeah. and travel and also the fact just like the horse combat and stuff like it it seems like a mass that we don't know I'm sure it's going to still be fundamentally the formula but it's probably the biggest shake up of the formula I know like each Souls boring game since I think I've become a bit of a fanboy because as soon as I saw that I was like oh fuck and I'm like wait a minute I'm, I'm a Souls boring fanboy it just kind of <laughs> hit me it's like I got like excited to see Elden yeah. Ring, whereas before, to be honest, I it would have just glazed over me. I, I wouldn't really have uh, minded. But yeah. Um, yeah. Out, outside of E3, I think my most anticipated game for a long, long time has been Dying Light 2. Mm, yeah. um, the game that at some point I was starting to believe that I had imagined and that wasn't actually real because it's just been in this, this state of stasis you yeah, know, for yeah. so long. It's been long. in development hell for a long time. Yeah, yeah. and um, the first game, uh, have you have you played it? I don't think, uh, have you not? Nope. nope. Yeah, it's um, best described, uh, open-ended uh, zombie game with the parkour of, like, Bear's Edge and really nice first-person combat. Like, it, it, it was my biggest surprise, I think, of the PS4 generation, just how much I liked it, because... There's an awful lot of red flags there, open world, um, zombies, you know, um, kind of mixing a few different styles, you know, the parkour, if that didn't work, because that's yeah. such a key to getting around, obviously the basic traversal, but if it was a bit fidgety, you know, like Assassin's Creed 2, if you're trying to run, you'd be running up against a wall for ages and the controls just weren't really tight, but well, it controls super well. You know what was put me off? Dying Light always was Dead Island because I played Dead Island one and I mm-hmm. didn't like it. And then mm-hmm. I saw Dying Light. And I, th- I think I, I didn't really pay too much attention to it because I, I thought it was very similar to Dead Island. And I thought mm-hmm. Dead Island was, was pretty janky. Yeah. Um, like, w- I think De- or Dying Light is probably a much tighter um, kind of... Uh, take on that dead island formula like a, I, I think as well the fact that they kind of foregone uh like open spaces like it's very compact like in a slum area so it's mm. really a lot of like rooftop dashing and to be honest when it hits nighttime in that game 
<laughs> it's it's really one of the most like you know accelerating experiences especially when you start the game because you are very very vulnerable and even when it got to the point where i had a load of weapons like meg hits and i somewhat knew my way around the map as soon as nighttime hit it was still like oh fuck like yeah um and that's, I know. That, that's a huge compliment to the game to be fair and um also the co-op um experience was it's super super fun uh, to mm. just play through the whole game of co-op and then uh, the following DLC that introduced like vehicles that you can customize and stuff and there's a bit more of an open map but that was handled really really well so anyway with Dying Light 2 I'm like okay it's got one of the main writers of The Witcher 3 whose uh, name eludes me and yes. it was uh, just developing the parkour and it, it just looked like a fantastic um, sequel overall because the first Dying Light I just have to say story-wise just by the numbers generic the main character is called crane for god's sake and he gets kicked off a crane at the start and it's like symbolism um <laughs> so that was definitely a weak point so the idea of more um more evolved uh more developed uh mechanics that were present in the first game combined with potentially a very engaging story yeah. i'm like that that that's just gold but it's being delayed and put through hell and i won't believe it exists until i'm actually playing the damn thing and even then there might be 10 minutes or so where i still think i'm imagining it um yeah. uh so i think as well the other games would be psychonauts 2 mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because i've always had a lot of love and admiration for the first game um which is available on ps4 so i would recommend anyone just give it a go it is a ps2 era title but it is in terms of just its story characters and just just visual appeal. There's very little that you can compare it to. Um, yeah, it's kind of um, vintage Tim Schafer like. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I never thought a sequel would happen, and it doesn't look like it's going to be a Shemu three situation <laughs> uh, because there was a uh, you know uh, fan funding going towards this as well. But it looks like they've really taken their time with it and that they're really putting. Um, a lot of love into it so i'd be excited to play that and i think kenna would be um another one um which yeah. is going to be cross-platform so i don't need a ps5 to play it um so yeah kenna bridge of spirits was the f only game really out of the ps5 launch cycle when they're kind of showcasing games that were coming up that really caught my eye again it just it just looks amazing um, uh, in terms of visual fidelity, if I'm playing on the PS4, I probably won't get that full on, like almost Pixar experience in terms of uh, the graphics, but it looks like a pretty good game. Um, and uh, what, what about you outside of E3? I think that those are the ones that spring to my mind. Yeah, no, they're, they're solid games. Like I know I've, I've often been very close to picking up Dying Light since, you know, you've given me such a glowing review of it. And I know it's done really well critically as well. Um, so I know that that's definitely a game I will I will get around to maybe before the sequel comes out. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll get you to, to drop me loads of really good weapons or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, that, that, like I, if I can interrupt for one second, that was one of those brutal things I think I've ever done online. So like I was playing with um, a friend and we met this guy online. He was obviously a good bit younger, like, and he was just saying, "Oh, oh, you have mics, you know? Um, do you want, do you want to be like friends and stuff?" And <laughs> We're like, oh no, like we we're really bad at the game. Like we only have like a machete, and he had like these electrified machetes and like just everything, and he dropped us like so many weapons. Like he's like, no, I'll, I'll like help you guys. You know, it's like it's really good, and like oh, you know, we can just be friends. Maybe we can play together sometime or whatever. And then like he added me as a friend on PSN. It's so brutal. Um, <laughs> I see and, where this is going already. <laughs> yeah, and pretty much, you know, uh, I think it was my cousin. Yeah, he was playing with me. He said, like, oh, "Do you have any, uh, do you have any more med packs there?" And I was like, "This is starting to get the feeling of like a shakedown." You know, like we're just exploiting this super lovely kid who just wants to like chat to people, play a bit of dying light. And then um, it was like we we <laughs> he then folded to kick him, <laughs> and I. <laughs> And it just got like really awkward because he's like, "Why, why, why would you do that?" And I just kind of like panicked. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and he oh, then, wow. and he's, we still all like the pile of weapons. And then it's like, "All right, let's dig in." I think that was 
brutal dickheadish thing I've ever done online, but the weapons served us very well. It gave us a good foothold in the game. Anyway, that's, anyway. That's good. Yeah. That's I, good I need segue. to cleanse my soul of that because um, I, I still yeah. feel quite bad about that. Yeah, this is yeah. like your your confession, I think. Um, yeah. 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 So I still remember his fair. PSN. I, I won't give it out out of, you know, courtesy and stuff. Maybe I should message him because he's probably like 22 now. Or <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, I think you told me that before and I think you might have actually messaged him when you, when you did I, this, I think. I did. I was just yeah. like, oh, sorry, no, I only read really people that, you know, I know. But uh, I was just... Because it is a thing on the <laughs> PS4 where not, not as many people have mics as they did back in the day. So I think I think the kid was just excited to just chat and play and was so lovely and helpful. And I just turned that. I taught him about the world, though. I taught him a very cruel life lesson. Wow, yeah, that's that's what we're all about. Life lessons here. Um, yeah, so um, Kenna, again, is, is another one that I'm really in, interested in. You know, since it was announced at the, the kind of PS5 reveal, mm -hmm. I was super excited about that game because I thought it looked really interesting. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll, that was kind of one of my planned day one purchases because it is at that lower price point um so i think i might try and pick that up straight away and um, when it comes out because my playstation 5 library is very uh it's, it's very slim sad pickings, man it's, though like it's, it's slim sad. and yeah. it's sad because i would say bar maybe spider-man miles morales which again is a cross-generational title that like it's like sony are burying it in the ps4 store you think such a big title they'd still be promoting it not yeah. a reference to it anywhere because they've so few titles. I think they still want to trick people into thinking you can only play this on PS5. And they <laughs> kind of sneaked, you know, the, the PS4 version onto the story. I just get that impression, man, because like there's so few <laughs> games. But anyway, apart from the PS5 version, that I would say you've all the big hitters already, which is just well, like don't have Returnal or Ratchet or Returnal. And Clank. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Ratchet and Clank just. It's came just, out like a week ago, two weeks ago at the time of recording this. So yeah, purely just because of the price for those two games. Like Returnal, I was again close to buying, but then I bought Resi five, Resi eight at the same time. So um, that's why I, I kind of chose Resi over Returnal. And Ratchet and Clank, I'm I'm holding off on until it drops a bit because like I know I'll really enjoy it. It's just you know for 80, 80 quid, eighty bucks for. 12 hours of a platinum you know it's just not it doesn't make financial sense at the minute yeah and, and like for me like i never really connected with ratchet clank as a series perfectly adequate games i wouldn't have anything overly negative to say about them you know in that way but it just never really clicked with me yeah well um, now like in particularly this game does seem to to wow everyone um and from what i've seen like people have said that it doesn't translate to video. You know, you have to be there playing it yourself. Yeah, like, the, the thing I will say about it, it's the first game on the PS5 that I, I've seen that I would say that's truly got one foot into this new generation, which is essentially the current generation. Like, it seems to be the most ambitious yeah. out of the, the launch titles. Or not is. launch titles, but early first year titles anyway. Yeah, and saying that kind of brings back actually something I wanted to mention when we were talking about Elden Ring, because I think actually it's funny when you see Elden Ring, because when you've played Demon Souls on the PS5, it's actually a huge step back graphically, Elden Ring, um, which mm -hmm. was one of the things I noticed when I was, um, when I was actually watching the, That's the trailer. That's good yeah. Um, because it's funny, because even though it's going to be an amazing game, you know, they don't have um, Blue Point you know, making the remaster for it, you know, who are obviously the masters of... Blue Point kind of fantastic. ...upscaling things. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's kind of a one funny tidbit about, um, about Elden Ring because, again, it is that cross-generational game that um, they're not har harvesting, harnessing the power of the PS5. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, so the only other real game that I'm, I'm like, I've, my site's really, really set on is Gran Turismo 7 because that's a, a series that I've just, you know, grown up on um, ever since the PS1. I've been a huge Gran Turismo fan. Um, no other racing game really has ever appealed to me the same way that, that Gran Turismo has. You've never been um, tempted by uh, Ford, so no. <laughs> no, no. Like, I, I, I've played Forza before, and, you know, it, there's def it's definitely a quality experience. Like, Xbox are lucky to have that game and that series. Um, but in terms of the feel of the game i don't know it's 
I suppose I always thought Forza was a little bit more on the, the arcadey side. Um, yeah, Gran Turismo Gran has Turismo. an amazing attention to detail. Now, I think the last one I played was five. Um, Gran Turismo 1 was one of the first games I got on the PS1, and I played 1, 2, uh, and 4. Um, I remember getting the, uh, the prologue, wasn't it, that was like released, and uh, I actually enjoyed a lot, but like, I, I think Burnout was the last um, racing series. Um, Midnight Club, Need, Need for Speed, Undercover, and uh, Gran Turismo 4 prologue, they, they were kind of the heady heights of my <laughs> racing days but it was it was just a a genre that I kind of just never as I got older I never really went back to and I I, I love the feel of those street racers and the customization that was possible particularly Midnight Club 3 the DUB edition or the dub edition well I don't know what yeah. it is um but the Dubliner edition like um <laughs> but yeah like Gran Turismo but uh, my fear with that is that's going to be cross-generational as well is it? I don't know. I believe so. Wait, okay. I will. I will quickly. I, I, I can't will remember. Quickly, I will I quickly confirm this by doing I thought, some. I thought it was PS5 exclusive, um, but I'm I'm happy to be. Uh... Okay, Gran Turismo Seven <laughs> PS4. Okay, Q research montage. <laughs> um, Gran Turismo. So I remember it. Uh, that they announced it's going to be on PS4 as well because this is going to be a key point um, for something I want to make. Okay, da, 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 da. I cannot read fast enough. Uh, PS5. Oh, I see that. Yeah, yes, it is. Multi. It is. Wow. It is God. coming. To, sorry to break the news to you, Dan, because yeah, no, that is actually we, disappointing. We, 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 we've discussed games that we're looking forward to, right? And yeah. there is one game that I've removed from that list of anticipated games personally. And that is God of War 2. Ooh, c- controversial. <laughs> Ryan or Rock. Controversial. Now, I yeah. will still play it or get it <laughs> at some point. But when I heard that that alongside Gran Turismo 7, because I believe it was announced at the same time, could, could be wrong. Could, correct me on that, please, in the comments. You know, uh, please, please, you know, inform my ignorance. But... Um, <laughs> As soon as I heard that that's going to be on the PS4 as well, my, my heart sank because it's been tethered to old hardware. And that for me has to be limiting the creative um, possibilities um, for developing a sequel and for extracting the most out of the, the newest current generation of consoles. Now, why they're doing this, you could argue, oh, because, you know, the install base is so much bigger on the PS4 side and with PS5 shortages they may have just thought look it would be easy enough to convert it down to PS4 but this would have to be a decision that was taken quite early in development uh, mm. you know because I'm sure like they're not going to pull back massive ambitious uh, worlds or levels or areas um, or set pieces you know given the history of God of War so I just think that Ratchet and Clank is an example of um, what is possible on the PS5. And I just think that it's still going to be tethered to, you know, that going through a little little gap in a cliff as the game loads up the next area. Like, those are all, like, design choices that are taken to account for hardware, whereas the PS5 would have removed the need to do that. You can still have those sections that, you know, are in vain of, hidden loading or like, that are just there to space out the time between massive areas. But in short, yeah, I, I just think that that was very, very disappointing that we're not going to see like a fully untethered, fully fledged exclusive PS5 version of, of God of War because it, it has to be limited by the fact it needs to run on previous uh, hardware. So that was very disappointing. It's a really interesting point because you know, of course, it goes very much against what Sony had promised in had, a way. Had stated, you know? had definitively um, stated. Yeah, there was a big push on you know the the generational difference, and you know Xbox got a bit of slack for saying you know that they want to kind of make everything work on the on the Xbox One, and people were like, you know, huh. Yeah, <laughs> and and now and then you know then of course it all came out um, about you know I think it was maybe Horizon 
um, Forbidden West was the first big, yeah, kind of big reveal that it was actually going to be on the PS4 as well. Um, I'm I'm going to just like maybe be the devil's advocate here though in, good, in regards good. to your I, point. I like to because, be challenged. I like to be challenged because <laughs> I, I I like I completely understand you though. I'm, I'm I know you're playing Final Fantasy VII, so I know you know those you know crawling through the crack. You know seconds. too well at the moment. Too well, yeah. But I don't know, like God of War just it, it handled like there was no there was practically no loading in that game um and it looked amazing and it was a great game so i have a lot of faith in santa monica to deliver something that is amazing and well, santa, it, santa monica I, I i agree and santa monica have always found a way to get the most juice out of a system because god of war 2 for the end of the life cycle of ps2 was visually remarkable and it ran super smoothly. God of War 3 at the time was like a visual feast. And the, like they always, always developed a super well-optimized experience. So I, I, I completely agree with you there that I do think in the hands of Santa Monica that it will be, I'd say they'll push it to the absolute limits. But my point then would just be the fact that there is that barrier of the PS4 yeah, they're no, not going to be able to go much further than that. It's in- indisputable, and that's just a shame. Yeah, no, you're completely like. There's definitely like, there, it's definitely a bit of a fact there that it it fundamentally has to be limited by the PS4 because you know, like you said, it's you, you know that's a a hard hard disk drive. It's not an SSD, so there's going to be there's going to be concessions there, and hope like maybe they won't bake them into the design like they did there like maybe on the ps4 version there'll actually just be a loading screen and on the ps5 there won't that 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 could be like the the middle point because um i'm sure like it's doesn't even need to be stated but i'll say it the ps5 version will probably have you know different patches it'll hopefully run your 60 frames it'll have you know better textures all that kind of stuff that comes with the ps5 performance patches so there's no doubt it will run better but as you said i'm just worried about the foundation the structure yeah. of the game, not the visuals or the graphics or the frame rates or anything, just the way the worlds are designed, the set pieces are laid out, the scale of them. Yeah. Um, maybe they could just go like a 10 second, 15 second warning with like, duh, 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 <laughs> and this, like, it's your own fault for being a cheapskate. Duh, 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 duh. Um, and then just kind of forego that need to stick with the old school established formula of just having these quiet little crawly moments you know just kind of stuck in uh to elongate it but yeah, yeah. sorry sorry to break the news about Gran Turismo 7 no I'm, I'm yeah I'm actually like you know I think if you, if you go back to that bit in the video you'll probably see like real-time disappointment <laughs> yeah I can um, see it I can see it in your eyes now that that might be different because Gran Turismo um you know it's it's normally just set levels um i don't think it'll follow that no load well maybe on the ps5 like no loading screen no you're um, right yeah it'll be like God in and out. so yeah. i don't think that'll be felt as deeply as in god of war because yes. just just the genre of of the game so i i imagine the ps5 version of gran turismo 7 will look stunning and will yeah. run brilliantly and yeah it'll just be like a pretty much essentially just a ps5 experience that just you know turn down the frames stick it on the ps4 be grand <laughs> yeah you know i think it's no it, it goes back to kind of us discussing about ratchet and clank and seeing the how they've utilized the ssd i know is probably something that everyone has already spoken to at length about and we're all we all know how good the ssd capabilities have translated into a gameplay kind of hook there in, in uh, Rift Apart. And yeah, I think it's a very valid point that if if it's a cross-generational title, God of War will have some concessions, but we'll see. You know, I, I to be honest, I'm going to buy it day one, I think, because I, I really enjoyed the first one. Um, so maybe you can you can borrow mine after I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Corey. Um, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, but anyway, I think like my kind of my my 
my overall thoughts on kind of games I'm looking forward to at this point is that this really is, it really feels like the start of a generation where there is a bit of a drought. Like I haven't been stuck for anything to play at the minute, but I have been going back to a lot of games. I'm still kind of clearing that backlog of, of great games. And like we're, de- you know, with the PS3, the PS4, um, and now the PS5, we have so much to play there and on the, the Vita, PlayStation Network. The Vita, and the, the Vita, Vita in my yeah. case, you know. Yeah, so we're not like stuck for anything to play. So I'm not feeling like, not feeling like I have nothing to play at the minute, but I, I do feel like I have nothing to buy brand new. Um, mm-hmm. And I feel like that's kind of going to be extended to next year. Like the next, like there's nothing really that I'm super pumped for at the end of the year. Like it's it's getting into January until Elden Ring comes out. So it's, you know, usually I have some kind of really big ticket games November time. Um, and this year, you know, there's nothing really like that's a must buy for me. So um, I think it's 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 a real typical start of the generation. I know the road ahead is going to be bright, but at the minute it is definitely a little bit on the sparse side. Um, yeah, I, I think I think, you know, the whole uh, global pandemic and uh, technological shortages is slightly atypical as well. So yeah. I think that that's probably going to knock that typical stride cycle of a year of 18 months, maybe as far as like two years, two and a half yeah. years, because I, I don't know the inner workings of a game studio. I, I'm not claiming to be an expert. I don't know how they navigated the waters during COVID. So you don't know what's being made or how much you know, of a slowdown occur behind the scenes, but it had to have affected them. Yeah, so no, I can did. imagine, I completely agree, man. Like, I, I, I think, you know, the, the, the dry, it's still going to be kind of uh, <laughs> dry, <laughs> arid land for a while. Um, and all it takes, though, with video games and all yourself is just one big announcement. And suddenly it just seems to build up and it will be like a whirlwind again. You know, who knows yeah. what Rockstar are planning? Who knows what, you know, Aces and the whole uh, Sony still have? Kojima's been making some rumblings recently. <laughs> uh, so there's still a lot there, but I, I think, yeah, it, it'll, it'll be a while, but there are still games, you know, like, let's say, Ken and Psychonauts 2 that are coming relatively soon that I, I will gladly give over my not so hard earned money, but the money I got for showing up to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's exciting. It's always exciting ahead. Um, I'm I'm actually I'm playing the PS3 game at the minute, you know, so that's that'll tell you. Um the state we're definitely not stuck. Yeah. We're not stuck stuck for things to play in general, but uh, yeah, the PS5 is is a bit of a uh, a bit of an empty box. It's become a backlog <laughs> machine. It has for, for me at least it has, yeah. Um and you know, I'm 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 not wanting for any games definitely, but yeah. And yeah, maybe my last point about this whole thing is that um you know, everyone is is going is saying that Xbox is great in E3. I think it was definitely a solid show, but like all it was really was this is this is Game Pass by Game Pass, and that that was pretty much it. Um, and I think they're really putting all their eggs in the Game Pass basket, you know, basket or whatever you say there. Um, so, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I'm I I personally don't have any interest in buying an Xbox. I'll buy an Xbox if I have to to play like the elder scrolls um maybe that'll be the only reason i'll, I'll buy one but um, achievements I'm... just aren't the same man oh, it's juicy man. platinum it's just it just doesn't it just doesn't hit the same notes no you know like the trophies on the playstation are like a nice smooth jazz saxophone solo whereas achievements are like a triangle solo <laughs> it's like yeah it does have its place but it's not really impressing anyone <laughs> and we'll leave it there <laughs> thank you for watching as always um leave us maybe some suggestions or um what you're excited for are there any games that we missed that will be going oh yeah of course that one yeah um, duh. Duh. <laughs> duh. Pledge of